Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to the front lines review at first. Let's go to Avdivka direction for you to see everything. And first of all, we are interested in this advancement vector of the Russian army because clearly they have some directly to Ocheretina. Well, previously Russians were able to occupy Avdivka. There were heavy fights for Stepova for a very long time. Before Avdivka, they occupied Krasnohorivka and Kamenka. From those villages, they advanced to this place and towards Avdivka. Later on towards Tonenka, here they were absolutely crushed and they have no attempts to move further for now at least after this huge devastation of their units. And now they have kind of the interesting strategy to advance towards Ocheretina with this very long frontline extension. Russian commanders now think that they might create this some sort of the corridor to break through Ukrainian defense and then attack our forces from this side, from the north, and also from the south direction. However, now it's early to say about the breakthrough of the Russian army through Ukrainian defense. They're at the process of extension at a single place. And let's go to this particular settlement to check out the Russian advancement for a couple of days. Or Now I choose the satellite image for you to see everything. So here we have the advancement of the Russian forces into this village. I think that after all they might occupy it, but what's about the next Russian advancement? I think that they put their army in a great risk of being encircled by Ukrainian armed forces, because Ukraine might strike from two of the directions. Here the Russian army is very thin with this corridor. I just wonder if Ukraine has enough resources to support this strike. Because if Ukraine waits more, Russia might extend this bridgehead, occupying more nearby territories. In this case, the encirclement wouldn't be possible. And Russia definitely would have a potential for expansion from this place. So why did they choose this exact location or direction? Because you may see that elsewhere there are some of the rivers and lakes, water reservoirs, whatever. The lake is going on the south all around. It's the natural obstacle, so it's hard for the Russian army to move forward. Also, we see the river and the lake on this side too. So it is the most convenient place for the Russian advancement. Plus, there is a railroad which goes from Avdiivka. I wonder about the condition of this road. Probably it's unserviceable, but Russia might repair this road for the further advancement in the future perspective, let's say. Now they cannot repair or use it properly because of the Ukrainian FPV drone strikes, but they look forward. If they someday occupy all of this territory, the railroad would be very convenient for them to use behind the front lines. It could be the main supply link for Russia to expand. It only could happen in a worst case scenario. We understand that the new military bill for Ukraine will be signed by Joe Biden very soon, hopefully this week, and with it comes the military support immediately. I believe that the majority of the supplies required to stop Russian advancement is already been delivered to Europe. While we were watching this political theater on TV, military did their job, delivering munition to Europe, in particular Poland. Just today we have the news that under the pressure of the Polish government, Polish protesters unblocked many of the checkpoints between Ukraine and Poland. It is done for the fast transition of the goods. What goods? Probably you understand. So, great news from Poland too. My friends, if you want to support the job that I do on YouTube daily, if you are capable to do so, you may join my Patreon page, it is in the video description just below, or you may scan the QR code available on the screen. Thank you so much for your awesome support. But let's return to the front lines, it seems like Russians are up to occupy Ocheretina. We have the video confirmation about it on their channels, later on I'll share the evidence to you. Yet it is hard for me to identify the exact location where the video was filmed, but I would rely on a deep state military map with their latest update, according to which the great part of the settlement is still in a grey zone. So for now, Russia has the success, they're all celebrating with this advancement. But again, this operation from this side is very, very risky. That's why they need the second advancement. And I guess I know the place 
where Russia would start their offensive, at least they gathered their forces in particular spot. It is near to Orlivka. In this place we have two of the roads across the river. So Russia might use both of them or one for their advancement. The problem for them right now that Ukraine controls all of the nearby area with this village, so Ukrainian army is capable to ambush the Russian advancing forces across this side. That's why Russians might advance from Berdichia and from Orlivka at the same time to disturb Ukrainian army at the place. But clearly without this attack the Russian advancement over here is probably going to be unsuccessful for them. They cannot advance continuously with this long snake. So Russians shared this video on their channels from Ocheretina, the settlement that I just showed you. So it is hard for me to check the location, probably they are at the place. At least it was confirmed by some of the Ukrainian military bloggers too. What a map was published by The Sun. The Sun is absolutely not legit media source. They spread lots of the misinformation about any sort of the topic, but here I may admit that they could be partially right. Russia obviously accumulates resources for their major strike this year. It might happen at the end of May or at the beginning of June. At least this information we have from President Zelensky and also from the Ukrainian intelligence chief Budanov. The Sun says that the strike will be in several of the sectors, for example from the Bakhmut direction, also from Robotin in the southern direction and also towards Kharkiv. But Ukrainian officials say that Russia would try to advance to the border of the Donetsk Oblast. In this case there will be two of the major strikes, one from the Bakhmut direction and one from Avdivka direction. Also could be from Marinka towards Kurahava and further. The Russian advancement from Robotina I would put under the huge question. Here they might do it, but again it depends on their resources. I don't think that Russia now has a resource to occupy all of the Donetsk Oblast. Our officials do not like to say that Russia might attack the second biggest city in Ukraine, Kharkiv, because they don't want to spread panic. But we see the signs that Russia is getting ready for this scenario. By attacking the city almost every evening with their ballistic missiles and today they hit the main TV tower of the city. Here you may watch the video from the place, definitely the top of the tower was downed. Zoom in once again, so it was hit somewhere in the place very precise hit by something. Luckily there is a park underneath and no one was hurt with this Russian strike. Now it is hard to obtain the TV signal in Kharkiv, but still people have internet and telegram channels to get the proper and precise information, because according to the polls, telegram is now the main source in Ukraine to obtain the information about what is happening in the country and what is happening on the front lines. That is why I also created my telegram channel, you may check it out in the video description just below, we have many of the followers there, it is a very useful tool to keep you updated all day long. At the same time we have some of the rumors from Ukrainian officials that they want to block telegram, because they are unable to control it, but they will not be able to do so. Now, what's about the perspective of the second Russian attempt to advance to the city and occupy it? It will fail. To occupy this big city you need a very big army. Potentially Russia might do it, but they need to concentrate all the forces they have just for this particular city. Take everything from the front lines, do not advance in any other direction and send everyone to Kharkiv. I don't think that it is really possible for them. But as I say to you in one of my videos, definitely Russia might do this step. It would be catastrophic for them. Especially now that Ukraine gets weaponry from the United States. I see that Russian propaganda is laughing about this military support, but definitely it is a huge one. In his statement today, President Zelensky said that Atakam's missiles for Ukraine were already negotiated before and will be supplied. He thanked to Americans, to United States President and Congress for this decision. From his speech we understood that this question is resolved. It means that Ukraine doesn't really need towers, for example, to cut the Kerch bridge connection or aviation to hit the Russian bases very far away from the front lines. All of that will be done with the long-range attack and missiles in a nearby future. Well, at least we have the signs from Ukrainian officials. They promised that the Kerch bridge will be caputed this year. 
The military bill which was supported by Congress is good because it has the separate attackum statement in it, which almost obligates the United States President to send those missiles. Alright, awesome news from the United Kingdom. UK sends Ukraine more long-range missiles in biggest aid package. The package is definitely a big one, half a billion pounds. Ukraine will obtain more Storm Shadow cruise missiles, anti-tank missiles, vehicles and even boats, plus some of the other munition. So definitely with the long-range attack amps with more Storm Shadow and the drone boats which are now massively in production, Ukraine has all the chances to eliminate the Kerch bridge connection. And Russia understands that, that's why they're building some of the railroad from Rostov and Don directly to Crimea. But that connection is not finished yet, so Ukraine might use this time to really disturb the Russian supplies. Well, at least it is quite logical for me, judging on supplies which allies give to Ukraine and also on the statements coming from Ukrainian officials. If the carriage bridge is not kaboomed this year, it would be just useless to eliminate it in 2025 when the main Russian supply road is ready. Guys, we have some of the fresh satellite images from the Sevastopol Bay. Judging on those, Kamuna's ship is mainly intact. I would say that the top part of it was damaged, we saw it on the video, but the vessel itself is okay. The oldest military ship in the world probably will continue its service. The heavy fights now are going also in Chasiv Yar. Russia definitely has the goal to occupy this town very soon, and as I said to you in the previous video, they sent new reinforcements. For sure, in the coming days, there will be one more massive attack or several of the mid waves towards the town and Russia would probably occupy it till this river. Speaking about the south directions, for example, Robotina, Vuglidar and Staromayorsky, the situation there is more or less standstill for a very long time. I believe that Russia is mostly concentrated near Bahmut and near Avdivka. The Russian fuel production dropped quite a lot this year, first of all because of the Ukrainian drone attacks, and secondary because some of the refineries, at least one in Orsk, was flooded by the river. So for this year, definitely it is minimum, but still not critical. Russia is still able to produce lots of the fuel for their army and basic needs of their people. That's why I think that Ukraine should continue with previous goals, but United States gave the military support, they were against those strikes, so probably they might tell Ukraine to stop attacking the oil refineries on the Russian territory. The military help from the United States is awesome. However, we have some of the uncertainty for 2025, as the Reuters says, because there is the chance for White House administration to change. So the new administration might have some different policy, coming out with initiatives blocking the military support of Ukraine with the current military bill. Well, from the legislation perspective, I don't think that it is real, but based on Reuters article, they say that it is possible. At the same time, we didn't see a huge resistance from MAGA group in blocking the current military bill. That could be a good sign. Polish officials say that they're ready to give permissions for the United States nukes to appear on the territory of their country. Probably it is the response for the Russian nukes in Belarus, which were delivered there a few months ago. We are speaking just about the tactical nukes, however, the range of those is okay to reach Moscow, for example. It is not the first time Poland speaks about it, and I think this time, this year, United States would definitely base their missiles out there. Alright, Budanov admitted that it will be a very hard time for Ukraine during this May and June, because Russia accumulated enough forces for the massive attack. He said about it in his interview to BBC. Well, Russia will try to get as much ground as possible before Ukraine obtains the main military package from the United States of America. At the same time, Bodano says that the situation for Ukraine wouldn't be catastrophic in any case. Here we have the map update from the Mykowsk 73, the military analytic whom I trust, as well as many of his followers. Here we have more details. Ukraine is using tanks, Russia is using aviation bombs on Ocheretina, and Ukraine fires using artillery systems as well. So Russia definitely put their flag, but they were not able to occupy all of the settlement. It's early to say about their success. At the same time, we have the report about the Ukrainian counterattack in Bakhmut direction. So Russia has the south vector from Ivanovsk, but today Ukraine advanced on the south with a counterattack. Awesome update for a very long time. So Ukraine actually is capable to strike. 
so potentially Ukraine might count the Russian attack also in Ocheretina. And now, my friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.